Hey everybody, welcome to Marcy Creates. This is Marcy. And for you today, for Tutorial Tuesday, I wanted to show you some finished pieces from last week's project, which was the laser wood and the washi tape uh, components that we made. I ended up making some earrings and I just tried to do a variety of shapes and styles for you to see just how versatile this is and how pretty it turns out. I'm really pleased with how these turned out. If I were to sell these, I would probably spray these with a with a thin coat of some type of urethane spray or to seal them. Uh, but for the purposes of the teaching of the tutorial, I did not do that. But if you want to give these as gifts or sell them, then I would certainly do that. But here we have our little dagger components with the polka dot tape. And I just add a little brass stamping and a um, really cute little uh, spacer bead. And then these were those nice long pieces. I added another dangle and I just added a crystal and some more focal beads there. And I love how this turned out with all the sparkle. It'd be great for a night out. Um, just think how these would catch the light. You know, if you were in a dimly lit room or if you were out at a party. And of course the crystals are gonna sparkle. And then I have to say, I think these are my favorite. The little koi fish with the tape. These are some Peruvian opal beads I had left over from a project. And these are a uh, different gemstone and I wish I could remember the name of it. It is some type of agate. And um, it has a few little inclusions in it, but it picked up the pink, the pinks and the greens in here very nicely. And I used all gold findings. And then this was our other pretty washi tape that had the lotuses and the cranes on it. And I did pearls to pick up the green, a little rondelle, another little saucer. And I just think they turned out lovely. Very excited about this. I am going to definitely do more. And I will certainly share with you as I do more. And then also someone had asked me about very intricate patterns. So I just wanted to show you, this is not finished, but I did want you to show you a more intricate piece. And basically what I did for that person that asked, you want to do the outside first. And then if you're doing an intricate pattern, of course you want to turn it over and cut your pieces very carefully. But also I pulled the pieces this way. So in other words, I didn't try to pull them out here because I was worried that the little tiny pieces would come off of the actual bead. And as you can see, I still have a little bit of trimming to do. So it is a little bit more painstaking. Uh, I would pick a busy pattern because if you pick a koi fish, something like this would work or this, you're not going to tell what it is. So you might as well just use something really, really busy. That would be my only suggestions and also how to do something more intricate. And you know, you're going to have, depending how small the pieces are, you're going to need a bigger, I mean, a smaller exacto knife. And they do have some with really, really tiny blades, but I have misplaced mine. So I was using this blade. I probably should have used a tinier blade, but, um, and they do, they are available probably on Amazon or Walmart any school supply store too, or art supply store. So anyway, that's an intricate piece. And then here's a little gallery of finished, wonderful washi tape and laser wood components. So today we're going to do, go to some more techniques I use for focals. And so I'm going to put these away and bring out my big tray of happiness, as I like to call it, on what we're gonna work on today. So let me just push these aside and I will be right back. Welcome back. Here is all our big pile of happiness for today. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna do a little like macrame stitch and we're also going to do use some sari fabrics, which is what these are. And I got these on Amazon. I think I just put in sari scraps. So um, I got a big bag of those. And then we're also going to use this stuff. This is from Jesse James Beads. 
and it's called fairy silk and I love it. it comes in all different colors and this is some linen that I got on Amazon I will link all the places below if I can find the Etsy shop I got this on I will add it but it's been a long time since I purchased these I think you could probably look even on eBay or Amazon as well for sorry sorry fabric or sorry scraps and of course Jesse James beads for the fairy silk and then you're gonna want some of these I think these are wax linen I got these on Amazon and this is just a very small sampling of the colors I got and I will link that below I think it comes with like 20 25 colors if I can remember and you get a whole lot and you can do a lot a lot with these as you'll see so really quick uh, just so you can see where I'm going with this and I'm going to show you how to do it I did a macrame piece already this is a piece I did last night just so you can see one finished and I did want to show you this piece because at the end you need to glue this and we're gonna and then you cut these pieces off so this is almost to being done but you can also not you don't have to have the linen this is um, the packaging material I got from, it was the ribbon that tied my package from Soflex, and I always managed to use that. Um, and these are quick links, and that's what I use with these. So you can buy these on Amazon, I will link them. You can buy them in jewelry supply stores, they're called quick links, or any metal link for that matter. And then here's more of our wood beads that we spoke of. These are really cool because of the hole in them. And that's why I wanted to show you these with the fairy silk. And then I have a piece of wood. These are actually components that I found on Etsy as well. Now the shop that I buy these wood beads from, I looked and they don't have any more of this shape. Uh, if anyone ever sees any of this shape, let me know. Um, Eventually, I'm probably going to have to create my own, but as you can see, the hole is kind of through this way. There's the other piece, uh, so that you can anchor it with a piece of uh, metal or a loop or whatever. And so today, I think what we'll start with, um, I'll show you some finished pieces, so you kind of know where I'm going. This one's finished, of course, but... Um, for those of you who've been watching my channel for a while, you may recall seeing a finished jewelry update that I did um, for my first ambassador box, which was the lemon, the lemon yellow. And this is the necklace. I'm sorry, I don't have it on a bust, but um, my I have to reconfigure my desk, and I thought with the tutorial I would not be able to do that quite easily. But as you can see, I've got these components that I made. And these are all those quick links with the linen. So as you can see, you can do a lot. Um, and then I just added, of course, a bunch of beads. And it turned out to be a really pretty necklace. Check out that tutorial, I mean, that uh, finished jewelry update. And then also in that finished jewelry update, I used... I made this piece and I used these wood components with the fairy silk and the linen and this is the finished piece for those of you who didn't see that but I do encourage you to see that video I did a lot of innovative things on those and so that's what we're going to learn how to do today and it's all pretty straightforward so you're going to need also some scissors and you're also going to need any type of good glue. I use the Geo Hypo Cement. That's what I like to use, but you use what you like. You can use super new glue and any kind of jewelry glue that you're happy is going to pretty much dry, clear, and not be sticky. And so we'll get started. So I'm going to move the sari fabric over because for right now, we're going to work on the fairy silk. And we will also move our linen out of the way our linen pieces 
I'll just move this guy up here. Okay, so here is our fairy silk, and this this is pretty straightforward. I'm gonna I started this one just so I could finish it on camera with you, but I, uh, I'm gonna show you with the orange piece. I just love this stuff. So first of all, you get a pretty long piece from Jesse James beads. I don't recall how much they are. I think maybe they're four or five dollars, but you get a pretty long strand and it's very gossamer and sheer. So as you can see, isn't that pretty? It's very soft too. It's very nice to work with. So when you're making a component like this in any shape, you just want something with a hole in it. Okay. It doesn't necessarily have to be this shape. You're going to take the end of your fairy silk and you're going to make a knot in the back. Just a regular overhand knot. And then I do it. I knew my fingers weren't going to work on camera. <laughs> That's why I started the other one. But I do two knots. So you want your knot to be in the back of the piece. This piece is flat in the back, so um, just decide if it's the same on both sides, which side you want to be the back, because that's where you're going to do all your gluing and cinching and that kind of thing. So do a double, double overhand knot, and don't worry, just take your time. It's a little fiddly at first, but you'll get it. And uh, yeah, there we go gonna make your knot like that okay not in the back so I've started this one with purple which I thought was gorgeous and basically when you start wrapping this now if you like it kind of in on itself it does tend to curl up on itself if you like that leave it I was just spreading them out because I wanted it to look more transparent shall we say I wanted you to be able to see the wood through it. So you are going to have to, as you're wrapping this through here, spread it out a little with your fingers and just pull it through. And you're just going to go all the way around your component with your fairy silk. And it gets easier. And I don't mind gaps. Um, I think that's what kind of gives it some personality, as you can see. You can see the wood underneath that piece, on that piece of jewelry I made, and I'm okay with that. If you're not, you can definitely overlap it so that you don't see any of the component. That's designer's choice. So, oh, and the ends are going to get in your way, just FYI. You will have to move them out of the way. And we're just going to keep wrapping over the bead or the I guess it's more of a pendant really I just think this is a really pretty focal and I'm excited to do it in purple because this purple is so vibrant I just love it um, those pieces of jewelry I showed you that was the first time I've ever worked with was it the first time I ever worked with some fairy silk? Might have been the second time. I think the first time, oh, that's right. I did a creamsicle, the creamsicle color I used. That's that orange color. I think that's what they call it on the JJB website. So we're going to keep, like I said, you just got to take your time. It's not difficult. It's just, it likes to curl in on itself, as you can see. And maybe if you have more nimble fingers than me, you can make quick work of this. <laughs> I'm still all thumbs half the time. And uh, let's see how we're going to wrap that. So we're almost to the end. And see, I still have a ton of the fairy silk left. So I could do other things with it. So it's pretty, you can get quite a bit. Um, over on the Jesse James Beads website. Okay, I haven't seen it anywhere else, so I don't know where else you can buy fairy silk. Um, now, you're going to tie this again to the other side. 
And what I do after I've tied all this is you're gonna come in and trim it, but don't trim it real close yet. Leave a little tail, which I'll show you. If I can get this other piece through here. If my fingers are gonna work, come on fingers. Ooh, I sounded really Texan when I did that. I'm not originally from Texas, but every now and then a little twang escapes. It's like, oh, I'm having an identity crisis. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna cut, leave a little tail, like I said. Don't worry about the tail yet. So there's our piece and you can smush this around any way you want. If you want pieces of the wood to show, by all means, you know, it's very easy to manipulate once you've got it on here, but that's generally gonna be your piece. And then, like on this piece, if you wanted to embellish it with more, like this linen stuff, you could do that. Uh, and I think I may do that with some orange. So basically what you do with the linen is you just kind of do the same thing. You're gonna come to the back here, find where you put your knot originally. Eventually you're gonna, you're gonna use some glue. So best to have all the ends in the same spot. So just make yourself a couple of knots like this. There we go. And then that's up to you how you wanna, you know, if you wanna just do another spiral, you can do that. I think I did a spiral and then to make that stitch, let me move these little guys out of the way. To make that stitch, I took the end and pulled it through again like this. Is that how I did it? Yep. And then you're gonna make another, you're gonna go in with your linen, make another loop through there. I think you're just making a loop and a loop basically. Yeah. And it kind of lines up on your piece like that. It looks pretty cool. Okay, so once again, put your loop, put your piece of your linen through your loop, I mean the hole, <laughs> and then through your loop towards you. Come on, mister. Nothing wants to cooperate today. And then you just pull it. And see how that cool that looks? We'll just keep going. Pull it through. You can make as many of these or as few of these as you want. The closer you do get to them, you know, the more busy pattern you're gonna have. That's, again, designer's choice. Pull it through, pull it through. And then when you're done, you're satisfied, you're gonna come back here and you're gonna make your second loop if you grab the ends that's fine you're gonna end up trimming them again anyway closer once everything is glued because then you know it's not gonna unravel that's why I wait um, same thing for that other little piece I showed you that had the little tails on it so just some double knots it's nothing fancy nothing you know and there you go. Any cute? Any shape you want. So then what you're gonna do, once you've got what you like, you're gonna come in with some glue and just glue wherever you have knots, like here. And I would glue like where the purple knot is. And then once everything dries, I'd wait a good 24 hours or so. Then you can snip all the little pieces and you will end up with something like this. And there's the back, you can see my little knots. 
and you can tuck the pieces in too. In fact, I tucked this in and glued it some more. And the glue is, I mean, it's pretty hard right here, but you can't tell because it's clear. So that's how I made that component. Easy peasy. Not hard at all. It's just a matter of playing around with it and, um, you know, doing what you like. Like I said, there's even more colors than these. And this orange piece will be cute. I was thinking for Halloween, these would be cute, adding some Halloween beads. So that's why I picked the orange and the purple and the yellow. So stay tuned for some finished jewelry with those. And you can also mix them. You don't have to just use one color. Like this would be cute if you did a, a springtime, you know, piece. Or if you really want to go bananas, you could probably braid them and then wrap them around your piece. That would be cute. That would be real cute. So FYI, so that's how I like to use the fairy silk on those pieces. Now on these longer pieces, you can do the same idea, wrap it, uh, but we're gonna use sari fabric for that. And you will see a finished component. I've got a finished jewelry update with the Bohemian Nights, Jesse James beads mix that we got. I finished all that jewelry. So in a couple of nights, I'm going to be showing those pieces of jewelry. And I used the sari fabric for one of the pieces. And it's a focal piece with this. So you'll see that. But I'll show you how I made it. So you're basically going to pick whatever fabric you want. Like I like this piece. I thought it was fun. And I like the frayed edges. I like this is going to be more bohemian, okay? And so I'm going to probably mix a couple of these. Let's see. Maybe I'll, I think I'll add this guy. Hmm. That's part of the fun is, you know, what colors. And I mean, I love sari fabric. I think it's so beautiful and fun to work with. Maybe we'll do fuchsia. Hmm. Don't like the fuchsia either. Let's go back to the... The green, maybe? Hmm. Nope. Let's go back to purple. Okay. So you're going to take your fabric. As you can see... Lots of choices. <laughs> That's going to take you longer than to do this, I promise, is figuring out what colors you want to use. And I literally just lined my pieces up and kind of gave them a little twist. Again, you could braid them, you could do whatever you want. And then I started at one end of this piece, like right here, and I made a big knot. And that was pretty chunky too, but once you play with it a little, you can tamp that down. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. I just want to get them. And they're all different lengths too, so try to see if you can get them all one length for this piece, at least anyway. Just the end, so you don't go drive yourself bananas trying to make a, um, a knot. And this is fun too, because it's so many different colors and, and even a few just scraps around the house. You know, if you sew or you do any kind of crafts with fabric, um, this doesn't want to cooperate. Well, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to pull one of these out. Just so you're not watching me fumble with this all night. So, oh, look at this with this. Now that's interesting. Okay, let's add this. Oh, it's attached. <laughs> it's attached to something. Never mind. <laughs> okay, so tie your knot. It gets fussy, you know. 
I'm not a sewer, but I do love beautiful fabrics, I have to say. I love anything with color. All right, so just make yourself a knot and then you wanna start wrapping. Anyway, you can grab the ends of these pieces too and wrap over them so you don't have them hanging. And basically you're just gonna go around your piece. And you can do this with these other pieces too. You know, any, any focal bead, it doesn't have to be a flat one like this one. And you're gonna wrap it. This fabric is so cool, I love it. And then, once you, oops, tuck those ends in. Once you get to this side, it gets a little interesting to make your knot, but you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. You make your knot on the other side. I probably should have cut these a little shorter, but. There we go. All right. Then you can play around with how this looks on here. Okay. Now, the fun thing about this, and like you can pull it if you want more of that teal to show, whatever fabrics you've got. And the nice thing is you haven't glued anything yet. So if you don't like the way this looks, you can pull it off and start over. Um, you know, play with it. Get it the way you want it. And then I basically took some of this. Let's see. Where did I do with that? Ah. I took some of this stuff. Again, the linen, the wax linen. And I just came in, made another... I really do like the, I think I like the orange better. I would say if you're gonna do this, use a contrasting color so it shows up. You want it to show. So, make sure you pull enough. Whoops, sorry about that guys. Make sure you pull enough. Here, let me cut this off. Enough of the linen that you don't run out This stuff cuts nicely too. And then, again, you're gonna come in with your knot. And this is kind of fun to do. I like doing these little crisscrosses. I have, you'll see, you'll see the piece I made a couple days. Stay tuned. Um, I don't wanna reveal it yet because I haven't done my finished jewelry update. So, but you don't have to wait a whole week to see that one. Just a few days, I promise. And that's the Bohemian Nights. So then you can take your linen and wrap. You can grab those ends and then come back the other way and do this really cool crisscross design. And then you can even, if you want extra on the edges, do that. You can come back through What's also cool about this is you can hang dangles off of these. Oops. And uh, and then you're gonna tie it. I think I used too much on that end. But anyway, you're gonna tie a knot like you did the other side, glue everything, and then you can use this component for whatever you want. Jewelry, you could hang it this way and make another add some beads to it and make another kind of cool boho tribal looking thing. Um, I also, on my other piece, I took wire. I took a 24 gauge wire and you'll see I wrapped wire. So then you got more sparkle. See that? So there's lots of things you can do with that. And I encourage you to experiment because that's what I did. That's how I came up with some of these things. I just played. That's all I did. Um, now, 
the last thing I'm going to show you is how to make these quick links with the wax linen. So this is very straightforward. Um, it is a macrame stitch of sorts. I guess it's like kind of the beginnings of what you would do in macrame. If you're familiar with macrame, macrame it's not going to be that big of a deal. Um, it's a very easy little stitch. You just have to do whatever it is in order. You're going to want to get a piece of your linen, whatever color you want. Okay, and maybe like your wingspan length. Just hold it out between your arms and do cut enough for your wingspan. It's going to be more than you need, but I want you to have more than you need than run out. So you're going to make a lark's head knot first. And if you've never made a lark's heads knot, um, oh, and I do want to give credit to Sarah Lovecraft because I learned this on her channel. Um, she made some earrings with hemp with this technique, so I do want to give her kudos. But um, anyway, you're going to make a loop like this, short end and then your long piece, okay? And you're going to take your quick link, you're going to put your loop through here, and you're going to pull both pieces, one's short and the other's real long, you're going to pull them so that you have something that looks like that. So you're going to have a short piece and a long piece, okay? Then we're ready to start. So I always hold this piece out of the way. This is a fun thing to do in front of the TV. Once you get the hang of it, you kind of, your fingers kind of automatically do what you want them to. And um, you don't have to think, but at first you're going to have to pay attention to what you're doing. So I'm going to do this very slow. You're going to make a loop and you're going to make that loop so that it's on top of the ring. Okay. Hold that with your thumb. You want to pull the string through the quick link like that. And then you want to put it through your loop. And then you want to pull and tighten it. Okay. That's half of the stitch. For the other half of the stitch, you're going to make another loop just like you did. But instead of being over, you're going to be under. See that? Hold this. Come through your ring. And pull it through your loop. And pull. And that is it. That is the entire thing. So, over. Make a loop. Put that piece over. Hold it with your thumb. Pull it through the ring. Pull it through your loop. Pull. Just make sure you have a nice tension on it. Make another loop. Put that under the ring. Hold it with your fingers. Pull it through your quick link and pull it through your loop. Okay. See that? One more time. You're going to make a loop on top of your ring. Hold it with your thumb. Pull your string through the quick link. Pull it through the loop you just made. Pull. Every time you complete a stitch, it's the under piece. The part where you do the loop under the ring is the finish. Pull it through your ring. Put it through your loop. Pull. See that? Now see, the dog's barking. Something's burning on the stove. The doorbell rings. And you don't remember whether you did over or under. You're going to know 
If you see a little line right here, let me hold that up to you and let me show you. See how that there's two stitches in a line? That's how you know. If you're going to put this down for any reason, I would complete, do the under piece so that you know when you come back to it to start with the over. So once again, you're going to go over the ring with the string. You're going to go through the quick link. You're going to go through your loop and you're going to pull. Okay, complete it by going under, hold it, pull it through your ring, pull it through your loop, pull. Okay, it's really just those few stitches. So I'm going to go a little faster just so you can see once you get the hang of it, it's not... I mean, like you can do this in front of the TV once you get good at it. I've made many of these components. I could probably do it in my sleep now, but when I first started, it took me a minute. So don't, you know, take your time at first. And then when you're confident, you can finish, you know, you can go faster. Uh, and one of the reasons I wanted to go so fast was because I had all these ideas and I wanted to make a whole bunch of stuff. I made a whole bunch of earrings which I think I have, when you first tune into my channel, whoops, when you first turn into my channel, okay, see how I got interrupted? This is good. So if you were to come back to this and you see the string and you don't see that line, you know you gotta finish it. See that? There's no line like this one. There's no stitch. So that's how you know. So anyway, as I was saying, I made a bunch of earrings. And at the beginning of my channel, my little Marcy Creates, with the painting that I did and the food, it's at the beginning. Uh, the, there's a little shot of the earrings. And I've looked for them. I don't know what where I squirreled them away. But I made a whole bunch one summer. I think it was last summer or the summer before. And they turned out all cute. And I did all different colors. And I mean, this little technique right here, you can do so much with this. So, so much. So I'm going to do a couple more stitches. I'm going to slow myself down again. Uh, this video is starting to get long, so I don't want to keep people too long. But so once you, once you get going, you can see this moves pretty fast. All right. So one more time. You can always rewind this too. But one more time, just so you're totally saturated with the idea of what the stitches are. Loop over the ring, hold it with your thumb, pull it through the ring, pull it through your loop, and tighten. To complete it, make a loop under the ring Pull it through, pull it through your loop, boop. Then when you get all the way around, like on this orange one, once you get all the way around, look how pretty that is. I love that stitch. I love the texture. You can do hemp with it. Like I said, I use this string from the uh, Softflex packaging for the... Uh, Hell Halloween box and so once you have this finished so you're gonna make a couple of overhand knots then you want to come in with your glue and glue this knot really good okay and let it sit overnight and once the glue's dry then you can snip it really close I haven't glued this yet so I'm not going to do that but I will show you on this necklace how it's supposed to look so here are some, you can see the knot. And when you make the jewelry, the knot will be in the back. You're not going to see it. But I love the texture it adds to the pieces. So this is 
So these components, I made a bunch, um, like I said, to coordinate. My necklace doesn't want to cooperate with me. And I mean, you can just do so much. Hang dangles from them, you know, do a little seed bead connection like I did here. Make a focal piece, which is, you know, our topic our topics for the last few weeks and I mean the you know the world is your oyster you can do whatever you want I, I encourage you to play 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 so next week uh, is going to be our last focal make your own focal tutorial and I think what I'm going to do for that is just do some combining of the techniques that we've already learned in other words paint and use washi tape paint and use linen, use washi tape and, and wire, use washi tape and, you know, on a focal and then add fairy silk, whatever we want to do, paint this and then use the fairy silk. Um, we'll just combine some techniques and see what cool things we can come up with. Cause once you've kind of mastered these or played with them, then, then your mind goes to, well, I could add this to that and this to that. And that's kind of the point is these are all jumping off points. These are all techniques and things you can build on. And that's kind of what I do when I learn something new. I, I try to add it to other things I already know. And that's what creates a really unique piece of jewelry. So thank you for joining me today. This was, this is a lot of fun. I like doing these type of things. And um, I hope that you do too. They add a lot of texture and interest to your pieces. So I appreciate you tuning in. And uh, for those of you who haven't noticed, I did have to change up my intro a little. Not that it matters, but um, the software or the app that I was using to make my movies, just I had to keep deleting movies. I mean, I had to keep deleting videos and it was very disheartening. So I had done a very good unboxing with the latest Jesse James beads and I had to delete it. So. I'm going to bring you highlights. I'm not going to go through the whole box, you know, piece by piece, but there's some pretty cool things in there I want to share with you. So anyway, thanks for joining me today. I hope you had fun. Uh, for those of you who have not subscribed, I would love to have you. Um, this has been a fun tutorial Tuesday section with the focals. If you haven't watched that, uh, they are numbered so that you can watch them one after the other if you would like. Those of you who are um, subscribers. I just appreciate you all so well, so much. You have just make my day with your comments. <laughs> They're so, so sweet. Keep asking questions. Please give it, giving me suggestions. So I know that I'm bringing you content that you're interested in and that you like. And as always, take care of yourselves and your families and stay safe. And I will see you on the next video.